Last thing we're going to take a look at here in Beyond the Pocket, looking at things specifically for the iPad, is creating your own popovers using storyboards. I took the standard master detail template and I added a toolbar here in the detail view. And then I took and added a variable sized spacer here on the left hand side. And then renamed this button here popover. And then I did a control drag from here to my new view, which is how I created the view for the popover. I just dragged the view controller on here and set the size. And when I created that segue, I selected popover as the segue type. Now in this case, I'm just going to hit escape because I don't want another segue. But you see, it created this segue that looks like a little popover icon. And just as with all segues, I give it an identifier. In this case, my identifier is popover. You probably are going to have more than one popover in an app, so make sure that you properly set that segue identifier. Let's go take a look at the code that makes that happen. Bring back the rest of our code. And everything is handled here inside the detail view controller. To the initial template, I added the fact that this detail view controller is also a UI popover controller delegate. That allows me to get information to know when the popover gets dismissed so that I can handle that properly in my code. In my code, of course, now I had to implement prepare for segue because I'm handling the popover segue. Remember, back up here at the top, I created a property object of UI popover controller called second popover controller. Down here in my prepare for segue, I come in and I first ask if that popover controller is actually on the screen. If it is, I call dismiss popover animated and pass no, which makes it disappear invisibly and set my popover controller object to nil. Then I look at my segue identifier and make sure that I'm looking at popover. And then I go and get the segue and get the controller out of the segue. And because this is a UI storyboard popover segue, I can ask it for the popover controller. And then I set that popover controller's delegate to this object so that I can handle this method right here. Popover controller did dismiss popover. What that's going to do is, because I took the copy of the popover controller and put it into my property, when the user taps away from that popover, I'm going to be able to properly initialize this back to nil because then I'll know my popover is not on the screen. So again, we'll run this briefly to take a look at it. Click the popover button, our popover shows up. When we click over here, the popover goes away, and that's because this popover controller did dismiss popover methods being called. If we click the popover, and it's there, and we click it again, you can't see it, but if we look at our debug output, we can see we knew that the popover was already on the screen, so we dismissed it and recreated it, but the user's experience of that is that it just stays on the screen. If you don't do that, you end up with a whole bunch of popovers layered one on top of another, and all you see is a darker and darker background, but then the user has to click away. In fact, let's just go ahead for the purposes of this and turn this particular thing off and run it again. And you'll see what happens. See why we had to do this. Now if we click the popover button over and over again, see how the shadow gets bigger and bigger? And now we have to click multiple times to make it go away. So that's not a good idea. All right, that's our look at Beyond the Pocket, specific concerns for iPads.